This is going to be the deep and secret things. And we're going to look at the last days invasion. The last days of the church age. You're seeing some crazy stuff. It's like, what planet are we on? What kind of movie are we in? I mean, what genre of movie is this? Is this a horror movie? Is this a comedy movie? It's just, just a really bad spoof movie. I mean, what is this we're living in? Every day you get up and it's like you see something even more crazy. You think you've seen it all and then something else happens. And it's like there's an invasion going on. It's an invasion of lunatics. In Matthew 4, 24, it says, And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. The people you see today are lunatics, and they are so far gone. The only thing that's going to help them is the Lord Jesus Christ. And just like the people in the Gospels, they're rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ, their only form of help. In Matthew 7, 15, it says, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed, for oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. The people are lunatics. They're throwing themselves in the fire. They're throwing themselves in the water. They're damning their self. And I'm going to tell you some things about this world you're living in. It's going to be like when Roddy Piper puts the glasses on in the They Live movie from way back in the 80s. You're not going to look at things the same. When you get your Bible off the shelf, clean the dust off of it, open the pages, and begin to read, it's like pulling the blinders off your eyes. We are living in a day when the people in the spotlight and in leadership are lunatics. They are mad. They are crazy. They're devil-possessed. And the Bible says, you know that famous verse in 2 Timothy 3.13, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. You listen to preachers in the 90s, and they're talking about how bad it is. You listen to preachers in the 80s, they're talking about how bad it is. If they could get in a time machine, come to the future, and see how bad it is, they would think that it wasn't as bad back then. I mean, they thought Elvis was bad back in the day. They thought Madonna was bad. They thought the Beatles were bad, and all of them were bad. But look at what we have now. It's just consistently getting worse. I mean, it's going to get to the point where they wear few, so few clothes. I mean, it's just going to be straight-up nudity on TV. Uh, the entertainment industry has to consistently push the envelope to get the interest of the people, get more sexually explicit, more bizarre, just consistently get worse because you're not going to get the attention of the people if you don't consistently get worse. We're living in a day that is unlike anything that you've ever seen. They don't want to recognize a difference between a man and a woman. How more stupid can you become? However, at the same time, watch the hypocrisy. You see, when you get so far gone, you become such a hypocrite. At the same time, while they do not want to recognize the difference between a man and a woman, they honor a woman for being the first female vice president. How does that make sense? If there is no difference, then what's the accomplishment? If, you, if you're not supposed to recognize it, then why would you recognize her for being the first female vice president? How does that make any sense? In 1 Timothy 4, 1 and 2, it says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some should apart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Notice in the last days of the church, the church will be speaking lies and hypocrisy. So how bad do you think the world's going to be if the church is doing that? They're speaking even more lies and hypocrisy. They are the biggest hypocrites that you've ever seen. They want everything gender, gender neutral to the point that they're picking on Mr. Potato Head. And yet one of their favorite words today is mandate. 
Uh, most of these feminists and crazy lunatics hate men so much, I'm surprised they aren't trying to change it to woman date. I'm surprised they'll even say that word. Uh, the devil-possessed lunatics of our day are not necessarily crying and cutting themselves with stones like the maniac that Jesus heals, but their hypocrisy gives them away. They are the biggest hypocrites. In Matthew twenty three twenty eight, Jesus says to the Pharisees, Even so ye also outwardly appear righteous before men, unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. The Pharisees looked good on the outside, but inwardly they were sinister. Inwardly they had something in them that was more satanic than what's in those conjuring and insidious movies. If you stood these devil-possessed lunatics next to your pastor, many times you couldn't even tell the difference. They have on a suit and tie, they have their hair fixed up, they smile, they wave. However, inwardly, they are dark and demonic. And when you shine the Word of God on them, on what they're doing, you can see the evil. Imagine the inside of their body to look like some type of spaceship, and it will have an unclenched spirit turning the wheel and hitting the buttons. They are under complete control of demonic spirits. And that's why Ephesians 6.12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. If you have any sense at all, you will know that these people do not have your best interest at heart. They, want, they say they want to fight racial injustice. And at the same time, those same people have become the most racist people of them all. The more you talk about race, the more race becomes a problem. Uh, if you're going to say things like telling me to be less white, that's racist. I mean, you can't tell somebody to be less white just like you can't tell somebody to be less black. A person can't help what race that they're born. And if you want me to kiss your feet because you think I owe you something because of your race, you're full of the devil. That's racist. I mean, how much more of a hypocrite can you become? You see, when you get so far gone in these things, you automatically become a hypocrite. But these people are lunatics. The lunatics are more offended by movies like Dumbo and Lady and the Tramp and characters like Pepe Le Pew than they are some devil-possessed lunatic who wants to convert your children into a sex pervert. Uh, little Nas X wants to use his music so that little children can come out of the closet. He says he knows he has a lot of children in his fan base and he doesn't care. So he, in his music video, he gives the devil a lap dance and dresses up like a woman. And millions of people and children are seeing this music video. And if you think that this stuff is irrelevant, what planet are you living on? You're stuck in your own little church bubble. Where, like a lot of Christians, they just go to church all the time. They think everybody goes to church. They think everybody's a Christian or something. And they... They think that this stuff is irrelevant. I mean, there was more people that uh, that watched that video in a day than that's heard your favorite preacher in the entire 40 years of his life preaching, of his entire 40-year ministry. You see, this, this stuff isn't irrelevant. You need to speak against these things. There's a lot more people watching the filth than there is listening to your favorite preacher. I believe the devil loves to attack the weakest link first. He wants to go after the children. And you'll notice that a lot of the sodomite stuff is directed towards the kids so that they can get them while they're young. But in this lunatic world, you become a racist, you become sexist, and you become homophobic if you say anything about anything. And they just want to make you look like the enemy. They want to make you look like a hateful person that doesn't love people. When really they're the ones that hate people. Or they wouldn't want you to do this filth. They wouldn't want you to do this stuff that's going to cause you a life of heartache and depression. And sin that leads to more sin. Little Nas X says he spent his entire teenage years hating himself because of the blank 
that people preach would happen to him because he was gay. So he's blaming it on Christians. Isn't that strange? You see, these people, they're not tolerant at all. They're not tolerant of Christians. They hate you. And they would kill you and get rid of you if they could. And John 16, 2, it says, They shall put you out of the synagogue, Jay, the time cometh, that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. If they could, they would blow away every Christian with a shotgun because Christians are the only ones making them feel guilty about being wicked as the devil. The, the Christians, the church, is the only thing standing in the way of this world just going to complete hell. You see, they, if, if we were to just leave right now, they would think they were making prog progress. They would be making progress for their sinful lifestyle, their little satanic world where they can do whatever they want to and not feel guilty about it. Their sinful lifestyle is their God. And they think if they can get rid of you, they're doing God's service. Their God is their belly. If they could get the church out, then they would think they were doing God a service. When the church leaves, things are going to get bad and it won't even be safe for them to walk around. There is a dark agenda by these wicked men to make your daughters become whores and feminists. They want to make your son a queer. They want to make your husband addicted to porn and alcohol and be a deadbeat. They want your wife rebellious and lusting after these filthy, soft-core porn Hollywood movies because they attack the family. Because the family, a good Christian family with a mom, a dad, and children, that produces strong people. Now, if you've got a family with two moms, two dads, things like that, it makes a weak family. It produces people with no morals you're walking around with a bunch of devil possessed lunatics and if you have your glasses on you can see it if you don't have them on you can't see it consider the word of god to be your glasses you you put you put them up and put it up in front of your face you can see the wickedness going on you get away from the bible you pull it away and you're blinded Second Corinthians 4.4 4 says, And whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. The glasses you need to put on is the word of God. The Bible is likened to glass. In James 1.23 and 24, it says, For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is likened to a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. When you look into the Bible, it's like looking in a mirror that points out all of your sin. And when you walk around with the Bible on your mind, you'll be able to filter everything you see through what you read. And 1 Corinthians 12.10 calls discerning of spirits a gift. Do you have that gift? Do you, are you able to see the wickedness that's going on? Or are you blinded to it and just think everybody's sweet and innocent and just you just want to love, love everything and everybody and what they're doing? 1 John 4, 1 says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. People need to quit with all this junk about how Christians are hating by speaking against sin. That's a lie. They hate me. They hate Christians. They are hypocrites. They want more rights, and the rights that they want will just take away our rights. They don't want equal rights. They want more rights. What you have is an invasion of lunatics. What you have is an invasion of a legion. Check out what the devil-possessed man does when he sees Jesus in Mark 5, 6. It says, but when he see, saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. Don't think it means anything if someone puts their hand on the Bible, quotes a Bible verse, or mentions Jesus Christ. James 2.19 said, The devils also believe and tremble. And in Mark 5, 7 through 9, it says, and it talks about the devil possessed man. It says, And cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus? Thou son of the most high God, I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. 
And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. The devil in this man said, My name is Legion, for we are many. And I guarantee you there is an empire of devils inhabiting the bodies of people like that little Nas X character, like Cardi B, NBA young boy, all these popular artists today. Even the people on the talk shows and the news like Anderson Cooper and Ellen and the women on The View, all of these people are inhabited by a legion of devils. They are all lunatics. They're crazy. And they're trying to make you crazy. That devil said, my name is Legion, for we are many. It's an invasion. As a kid, I watched a lot of movies I shouldn't have. And they had this one movie called The Faculty. Very wicked movie. But it's where aliens pretty much invaded this high school and took over the teachers first. To infect somebody, they had to put these little slimy things in the body of somebody else... And then they become one of them. And that's exactly what the devil and unclean spirits are doing today. Every music video, the movies, the TV shows, almost all of them, it's pretty much the devil taking a little slimy thing, putting it in your head, and over time you become one of them. They want to pull you over to a satanic, God-denying way of thinking with no morals. Nebuchadnezzar wanted to take the best of the children of Israel and teach them the learning and tongue of the Chaldeans in Daniel 1.4. They want to indoctrinate you, make you think differently, make you, make you think very unnatural. See, it's not natural, the things that they're wanting you to think and do. The devils are getting in the influential people in the world and trying to teach you the wicked way of thinking. The average rapper today is full of so many devils, you probably couldn't even count them. They want you to think evil is, evil is good and that good is evil. In Isaiah 5.20 it says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Think about this. Do you know how many people the devil can infect with a five-minute song? Music videos go on YouTube daily. They're on Pandora Radio. They're on iTunes. They're on the radio on your way to work. They're in the store. Everywhere you go. Now they're in the church. You go to Andy Stanley's church. He's got the filthy, wicked music of the world playing before every service. These songs blind the minds of the masses. It's like invisible chains going around the children as they are infected with the wickedness. Because did you know you can become a slave to sin? Romans 6.20 says, For when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. At the end of that little Nas X video, he snaps the devil's neck and takes his crown. The average sinner thinks he's in control of the devil and his sin, but you can give yourself over. You can give yourself so much over to sin to the point you're no longer in control, but it controls you, and the devil would think, would love for you to think that you're in control. Jude 7 says, Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Those people probably thought they were in control when they gave themselves over to fornication. Those people from Sodom are presently suffering the vengeance of eternal fire that devil said, My name is Legion, for we are many. There are many enemies walking about seeking whom they may devour. First, <clears throat> First John 2.18 says, Little children, it is the last time, as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists. It's an invasion. There's many. That guy said, My name is Legion, for we are many. And if you put that Bible up to your face, keep your nose in the Bible, you filter everything through the Word, you can see them. They may have on smiling faces. They may look like Joel Osteen and his wife. But if you've got the Bible, you can see right through it. The enemies of God are trying to recruit you for their satanic army. But if you have read to the end of the book, you know what happens to an army that's led by the devil. In Romans 20 and verse 8 and 9, it 
talks about how he's going to go out to deceive the nations, which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. That's what happens to an army that's led by the devil. Righteousness will prevail in the end. But will you be on the side of righteousness? Because the real invasion is coming. We're already seeing an invasion of lunatics and an invasion of legion. But there's an invasion of the line of the tribe of Judah. In Revelation 5.5, 5, it calls the Lord Jesus Christ the line of the tribe of Judah. And what you have coming down at the second coming is much scarier than the shadow of any mothership covering a big city. It's much scarier than alien spacecrafts busting up out of the ground. It's a lot scarier than a monster rising up out of the sea. What you're going to have is the Ancient of Days, the one from everlasting who is before all things and by him all things consist. And he's coming back in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. In Psalm 78, 65, he is wakened as one out of sleep and like a mighty man that shouteth by reason of wine. In Revelation 19, 11, he's coming back on a white horse. In Habakkuk 3.15, it says he will walk through the sea with his horses through the heap of great waters. In Revelation 1.7, it says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. In Zechariah 12.10, he says, They will look on me whom they have pierced. In Habakkuk 3.12, it says he will march through the land in indignation and thresh the heathen in his anger. In Isaiah 63.3, he says, I have trodden the winepress alone and of the people there was none with me, for I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. Revelation 19.15, And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. This is Jesus Christ coming back in the clouds. And this will be the most terrifying event in the history of man. This is the real invasion. He is the real visitor from outer space and the only one who can truly solve the world's problems. He came to save sinners the first time. The second time, he's coming back to take over what is rightfully his. That's the real invasion. It's going to be much more scary than anything going on right now. It's going to be much more scary than anything in the entire tribulation period or in the entire history of mankind. That's only... Unless you've been born again. If you've been born again, then you're going to be on the winning side. You're going to be behind him instead of in front of him. I mean, you don't want to be in front of him at this event as he threshes the heathen in his anger. You want to be in the Lord's army in a glorified body where you can fall upon the sword and not be wounded according to Joel chapter 2. What you have is an invasion going on. Many antichrists. The devils are saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Evil men and seducers show acts worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. They're trying to indoctrinate you. They're trying to get you over to their unnatural, demonic way of thinking. Are you going to get in the Bible? Or are you going to be deceived? If you're not saved, you need to get saved before it's too late. It's getting really late. The Bible gives us the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Paul explains to us how that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. He shed his blood. He was buried and resurrected. He tells us in Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Come to Jesus Christ right now. Stop what you're doing and come to Jesus Christ right now as the guilty sinner that you are. And believe on Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross to be your payment for sin.